Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike, and I'm going to talk about um, the person I interviewed was, his name is Steve Cook. He is the owner of Concrete Construction Services, which is a concrete construction, uh, concrete services company that I work for. I've been working for him for the past seven summers. So I'll start off with my background, how I got into this. Um, my lacrosse coach, one year, I was looking for a summer job, and I had known that he had hooked up some other guys with a concrete construction job in the summer. And so I was like, all right, I'll do it. And I didn't like it at first because you guys would get up at like 6, 6.30 every day of the week. And I mean, it's not easy work, concrete construction. If you ever done manual labor, it's, it's, it's tough work. Um, but it's really rewarding work. I love working with my hands. I love being outside, going to new places, doing new things. So um, I got into it and I, I really enjoy the business. I really enjoy the type of work and that's why I stuck with it. I've been doing it for the past seven summers. And you know, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't go back because it, it's not something you want to do. So I took this interview as a chance to, number one, gain a better understanding about Steve and his background. I, I, I've always had a good relationship working wise, but I've never really known about his background and how he came into the concrete construction business. So. He informed me that he started when he was 18 years old. He was pretty much his own boss at 18 years old. He worked for an excavating company and he was the foreman and crew leader of that of his of his group and really ran day-to-day -day operations of the company without having any ownership in the company. So this really was new and, and impressed me because this was an 18-year-old kid who had no ownership of a company who really uses leadership skills to run day-to-day -day operations, which I can see helps him run his company today. Um, CCS has been around since 96, so his second work experience was for environmental maintenance, which at the time when he was working was one of the largest snow removal and land um, grass cutting companies in Maryland. And that's where he met uh, my lacrosse coach, Lewis, who is also his business partner, him and Lewis. Uh, both own the company. Steve has the majority ownership while Lewis is, is a partner, just a business partner. But um, so when environmental maintenance was laying off some of their employees, Steve saw this as an opportunity to ask these guys what are the kind of work they do. And when they told him they do concrete construction work, he decided to hire these guys and he started his own company. Um, so that's really how, how, the, how it started. The niche that, uh, that the company addresses is um, concrete construction, or I'm sorry, concrete maintenance. So they do um, a couple of different uh, contracts with general contractors a year, but most of their contracts are with management um, service companies that we pretty much every year we have, we have contracts and these companies budget a certain amount of money that they, that they spend on concrete construction redoing. And most of the work is redoing uh, concrete strips and side, or I'm sorry, sidewalk <coughs> strips and stairs at um, apartment complexes all over Maryland. Um, so uh, we don't, they don't really do a lot of new construction and a lot of like building slabs and stuff like that. But it's mostly maintenance, concrete maintenance work. So um, another question that I asked Steve was um, some negative aspects of running his own business. And the first thing he said was the cash flow. Um, cash flow problem for a small business is, is a huge, it's a big problem and um, some years for him, uh, especially 2008, 2009, around there, it was a lot worse than, than nowadays and before. He's been in business since 96. Um, so, uh, yeah, the niche, that, that's the niche they address. Um, and the, the biggest failure that he mentioned to me was actually a job that I worked on last year and he took on a shopping center job and the main contractor had butt heads with another contractor and just a lot of miscommunication went on and the company lost I think he said around $25,000 and really had to stress the other work for their loyal customers out and spread it out so this was his biggest failure and I was I actually took a part of it so I mean it wasn't my fault but um, I saw firsthand how it happened so that was that's that was a great experience for me um, another problem, most of their workers are Hispanic, so the language barrier and miscommunication can be a big problem of that uh, business. And the one thing he said that if he could go back and do it again, he would learn Spanish a lot better because it would lead to a lot better communication. And, me, 
some jobs uh, actually have to be redone because they're not done the right way due to miscommunication. So um, those are some negative aspects. Uh, some rewarding aspects, uh, he loves being able to sign his own paycheck. He loves being able to take off whenever he needs to. Um, uh, one thing he said, it, uh, it's very time consuming running a business. Like you said, Connor, he didn't have a lot of time for uh, vacations and, and time with his family. So that's one sacrifice that he had to make. Um, but I, I really enjoyed doing this interview because I got a better background of, of, um, of Steve and um, really uh, reinforced my desire one day either or either run this company when he decides to retire or maybe go into my own type of uh, concrete construction business. And um, another thing when I thought about this class when you said if you know the, the difference between a legacy business and a lifestyle business, this is definitely more of a lifestyle business. Um, these guys, I mean, they're not exorbitantly rich, but they live well and um, they provide, they have about 14 full-time employees, so um, they provide a good job for these guys. And uh, so um, 